Strangely alluring. Mm, I like that. Ooh, that's really different. That's better than KFC. Definitely better than Popeyes. Right. Definitely better than wow. Bojangles. Better than KFC. This is this is good. Can I finish cool. this?
social activities we have here, we try to bring the Filipinos closer and makes this a home away from home. You too can be part of these activities by becoming a volunteer. Let us keep the Bayanian spirit alive. We will continuously think of exciting events and programs. Follow our Facebook page, Philippine Bayanihan Society Singapore, and on IG at Bayanihan Society SG for updates. Tara na! Magbayanihan Center na! Hi! Uh, good evening po to everyone, to our friends and families here in Singapore and back in the Philippines and all those all over the world who are watching and joining us tonight. We hope everyone is staying healthy and keeping safe. I am Minerva Lau, and your moderator today. And on behalf of my fellow directors, I welcome you to our eighth Bayanihan Talks webinar series. Tonight, we shall learn about the role of the Philippine Department of Labor, specifically the role of the Philippine Overseas Labor Office or POLO for short, especially during this pandemic period. Before I call on our distinguished guest speaker, allow me to share with you more details on what we do and what, who we are. The Bayanihan Society is housed at the Bayanihan Center, a four-story building located at 43 Pasir Panjang Road, just opposite the Maple Tree Business Center. It was officially inaugurated in August 2001 by the then Philippine Vice President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. It is a recognized volunteer welfare organization, VWO, and a member too of the National Council of Social Services here in Singapore. Our main objective is to promote advancement of education and skills and to provide a venue for, for the conduct of education training and personal development programs for Filipinos in Singapore. Currently, the center has been available primarily to conduct vocational training courses for Filipinos and secondarily to hold social and cultural events. Bayanihan Center is the home to Filipino overseas workers in Singapore, FAUS, which offers courses such as nursing, aid, international cuisine, basic and advanced baking, hotel and restaurant management, and many others. The center is also home to Ateneo LSE program or leadership and social entrepreneurship program. We also, conduct by any, we also conducted by any hand talks and now we have this webinar, which was organized in September, 2018. Topics included an understanding series on benefits of membership in OWA, SSS and pag -EV, as well as talks about art and history and Jose Rizal, the Philippine national hero. The center also has meeting rooms, a tambayan room and letter boxes available to Filipino organizations in Singapore. There is also a relatively new state-of-the-art photo studio where you can take portraits and photos with family and friends. Finally, we are the team behind the annual Bayanihan Walk, which was held since 2015. Also the team behind Bayanihan Lecture, which uh, the first one we held in August, 2019. And recently, the pleasure of having Ambassador Minda at the second Bayanihan Lecture held last week. Hope that provides a good picture of what the society does and offer. And now without further ado, I'd like to call on Mr. Saul DeFries of Polo. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam uh, Mini Lau, for, for the introduction. Good evening, Ambassador. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so, be probably before I, I proceed to my presentation, I just want to thank, uh, of course, the Philippine Bayanian Society Singapore. Uh, for giving Polo and the Philippine Overseas Labor Office uh, the opportunity to be featured uh, in this uh, series of webinars of uh, the Bayanian uh, Center. Now, uh, of course, I, I welcome this opportunity uh, as it 
allows us no, to maintain our engagement with, with the Filipino community. Uh, even during this uh, unusually uh, difficult and, uh, and, and challenging time. So uh, in this webinar, uh, let me just share. Now. So in this uh, webinar, uh, my assignment is uh, to present Polo services. So I, I, I came up with this title, uh, uh, Philippine Overseas Labor Office uh, Services, Transcending Time. Uh, I added the phrase transcending time because uh, I, I wanted to, to emphasize to, to everyone that uh, our services are just as important and uh, relevant uh, today as uh, they were uh, before the uh, before the pandemic, uh, our services transcend time uh, as as we continue to render those services that are uh, needed by the OFW community, and as we, of course, uh, continue to introduce new services uh, that are required by uh, the current uh, the current time. So. Uh, this is the, the outline of my presentation. First, uh, I will briefly uh, talk about the, the, the Philippine Labor Migration Management System uh, by dwelling on its uh, background, framework, and, and structure. And structure. Uh, this is going to be you know, just a very brief uh, uh, discussion on labor migration management system. Uh, you know, the, the, the labor migra migration management system of the Philippines is so broad uh, and, and, and complex. And I'd rather leave to our migration experts to expound to discuss uh, this uh, migration management system. But I will just make a very short presentation of the migration management system just to, just to uh, put context, no? Dun sa, sa aking, uh, uh, next uh, uh, topic, the union role of the Philippine Overseas Labor Office in migration management. Uh, uh, where I will present, of course, yung uh, POLO as an organization, its mandate, and of course, the, the services that are actually rendered by, by, by POLO uh, to the OFW community. Okay, so uh, as a background there, uh, the, the contemporary Philippine migration management system is actually anchored no, on the overseas employment program of uh, the Philippine government, which was formally launched in, in, in the 1970s, particularly or specifically in 1974. No? when the labor code of the Philippines was uh, enacted. Uh, of course, during the time life was hard, uh, the economy was in bad shape. Uh, there, was, there was high unemployment rate no? uh, during, that, during that period. So uh, the government then uh, introduced the OEP, the Overseas Employment Program, as a stopgap strategy or, or palliative uh, uh, measure no, to a recessionary uh, economy with very high unemployment rate, with very tight balance of uh, payment, and of course against the back backdrop of a slow overall development process. Uh, in, in other words, you OEP then was thought to be a temporary you know, or interim measure to to provide employment opportunities to our workers kasi nga mataas yung uh, unemployment rate sa, sa Pilipinas and uh, we wanted to take advantage dun sa employment opportunities uh, abroad particularly sa Middle East na nagkakaroon ng high demand for for workers because of the oil production boom uh, and at the same time we wanted to use the overseas employment program to shore up the, the Philippine economy then uh, by way of, uh, well, uh, the remittances uh, 
of, uh, of foreign exchange earnings of, uh, of our overseas workers. We call them overseas contract workers uh, before, no. Uh, uh, since then, no, we never stop. We never stop uh, exporting workers. We never stop uh, exporting labor. And, uh, and, and because of that, in, in, in the 1990s, we, we had this paradigm shift. No? Nagkaroon ng panibagong view ng ating migration uh, of, of, of labor. No? We started viewing migration as a socio-economic phenomenon, which was going to stay no? uh, for a long time, or, or if not uh, permanently. Uh, kasi nga, hindi tumigil eh, yung exodus, hindi tumigil yung pag, pag alis ng ating mga uh, manggagawa. Initially, we thought that it, it was just a, a temporary thing, no? pero hindi. So, naging talagang uh, phenomenon na, na ito. No? Kasabay nito yung uh, debate o yung pagsibol ng konsepto on, on, on globalization, yung international debate on uh, on uh, movement of uh, natural persons ta 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 tayo yun, no? At saka yung, syempre yung discussion dun sa, sa trade in services. Y hindi lang trade in goods, but also trade in services. So kasabay niyan, uh, nagbago yung, yung uh, paradigm natin o yung pagtingin natin sa, sa, sa overseas employment. Uh, so it was in the 1990s presenting itself as a well a legitimate option no? available to to Filipinos and, and and so yung policy makers natin uh, at that time thought that we should no longer consider overseas employment program as a labor export strategy but rather as a labor migration management strategy. Hindi na tayo basta-basta magpapadala ng workers. Kailangan i-manage natin yung flow, yung movement, yung pag-alis ng ating mga uh, kababayang manggagawa. Kasi nga, hindi na natin mapipigilan yung, yung, yung exodus. No? Naging irreversible yung, yung trend ng, ng pag-alis ng ating mga manggagawa. Uh, so nagkaroon ng paradigm shift, uh, imamanage natin, hindi lang basta-basta uh, i-export natin ang ating mga manggagawa. Uh, and, and because there were more and more, no, more and more Filipino workers leaving uh, for overseas work, uh, obviously more and more uh, uh, problems were encountered no, by, by our workers. And that is why uh, in the 1990s, binigyan natin ng diin yung pagbibigay ng protection sa, sa ating mga manggagawa. And, and so we, we passed a very important law, yung RA 8042, ang tawag dyan. Tinatawag natin siya na Migrant Workers Act of 1995, which was later uh, amended no, by uh, RA 10022, 10022, sorry. That's 10022, uh, which was enacted in 2009 no? or 2010, if I'm, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Actually, po, yung RA 8042 started in Singapore. No? Uh, creation yan nung uh, floor contemplation uh, issue na uh, dito sa Singapore during, during that time. Okay, uh, we move on. This is, this is the framework no, ng Philippine Migration Management uh, System. Basically, we manage uh, labor migration starting from uh, the pre-employment or the recruitment phase and then up to the on-site phase, no, yung actual employment ng ating mga workers. And then pati yung pagbalik nila and under each uh, pace of the migration cycle, nandun yung pro uh, protective mechanisms, nandun yung protective programs, nandun yung protective uh, uh, regulations uh, na nagbibigay ng diin dun sa uh, uh, 
sa protection at human development ng, ng ating uh, mga workers. So uh, this this slide uh, basically presents yung yung mga key agencies involved in migration management. So of course, definitely you have the DFA there, no? Uh, sa Pilipinas, you have the DFA, and then the uh, sa, sa abroad you have the Philippine missions, of course. Uh, nan Ang, ang DFA, of course, uh, sets the foreign policy and implements the three pillars of foreign policy uh, overseas. And one of the three pillars of, the, of foreign policy is uh, workers, I mean, overseas Filipinos uh, protection. Uh, and then, of course, yung DOJ, uh, sila yung involved in sa uh, interagency uh, council against uh, trafficking persons. Ang DSWD is very much involved in the retake reintegration phase of our OFWs. In some posts, ang DSWD ay merong uh, uh, welfare attaches. No? Uh, of course, ang DOH uh, ay involved uh, dahil sila din yung uh, uh, involved dun sa medical examination ng mga departing uh, Filipino workers. Uh, DBI is doing a lot of uh, trainings, uh, livelihood uh, support uh, for, for our OFWs. And recently, na, na, na punta sa kanila yung TESDA. No? Uh, so TESDA is now attached to DTI. And obviously, TESDA is doing a lot of uh, uh, support programs for our OFWs. And of course, nandiyan yung Department of Labor. Uh, sa ilalim ng Department of Labor, nandiyan yung mga kilala ninyo ng agencies. Uh, the POA, yung OWA, and then the NRCO. The NRCO is a relatively a new uh, government institution which is attached to OWA. It is a creation of uh, RA 10022, which amended RA 8042. Uh, NRCO is the National Reintegration Center for OFWs. So, sila yung uh, nagkikater dun sa reintegration phase ng, ng OFWs. You have the NLRC, yung National Labor Relations Commission. Ang involvement niyan, sila yung um, merong uh, exclusive uh, jurisdiction over money claims ng mga OFWs. Kung ang OFW natin ay nag-complain for unpaid salaries, sa NLRC uh, lapit yan. And it's the NLRC that has uh, the sole jurisdiction to, to adjudicate, uh, investigate, and resolve the case of money claims of IFWs. At siyempre, sa kabilang banda, no, uh, nandyan kami, nandyan yung Philippine Overseas Labor Offices. So, ito na, this brings me no, to the discussion of the role of uh, of Polo in migration management. Okay. Uh, Polo, uh, as a government organization, is of course under the leadership of uh, the Philippine ambassador or the head of mission uh, under the principle of the of one country team approach. Yung principle ng one country team approach was uh, enshrined dun sa RA 8042, Migrant Workers Act of 1995. Uh, Polo is headed by the Liberata Shea, and uh, it's composed of personnel from uh, Dole, from OVA. In, in, in some cases, there is this expanded Polo, uh, like in the case of Polo Singapore, where we have personnel also from SSS, as well as from Pag-ibig. Uh, you'll probably ask kung bakit uh, ang SSS ay, at pag-ibig ay naka, nakatat sa, sa polo. Eh. Uh, well, uh, two explanations. Yung, yung una, functionally uh, speaking, uh, pareho yung kinikater na naming constituents. No? Uh, puro OFWs, basically. And organizationally, yung those secretary sits as an ex- uh, Vice uh, Chair, no? ex officio Vice Chair rather, of uh, the Pag-ibig Board of Trustees at uh, Sharon a member of the Social Security Commission, which is the policy uh, uh, making body of the social security system. So in other words, there are umbilical cords no, that connect 
uh, SSS Paglibi and, and Polo. So that is why they are attached to, to, to Polo in, 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 in some in some of these schools where there are SSS and Pag-ibig uh, representatives. Okay, uh, ito po yung mandate ng, ng Polo. No? Generally, Polo serves as the overseas operating arm of the Department of Labor. Yung functions nito ay prescribed dun sa omnibus rules and regulations implementing the Migrant Workers Act of 1995 as amended by R.A. 1022. Uh, and the functions and responsibilities of Polo as, em as enumerated in the, in the omnibus rules are this. One, to promote and, and protect OFW welfare and interests and assist them in their employment problems. Two, coordinate the uh, employment promotion mandate Three, to, to verify employment contracts and other employment-related uh, documents. Number four is to monitor the situations and policy developments affecting our OFWs in, in the host country. And, and lastly, to supervise and coordinate uh, the operations of the MWOFRC, or the Migrant Workers and Other uh, Overseas Filipinos. Resource Center. Uh, these functions and responsibilities were written in, in broad general strokes. So in the succeeding slides, uh, I will break them you know, into specific uh, services that are actually rendered by Polo Singapore. So, and, and these services are one, welfare services, we have capacity building services, the social protection services, the employment regulation services, and uh, the employment promotion services. You know, operationalized nitong services na to, yung general mandate uh, given to, to Polo by the omnibus rules and regulations uh, implementing the Migrant Workers Act. So under welfare services, uh, we extend Repatriation assistance. Uh, this is given, this kind of assistance is given to OFWs who on their own no, cannot return to, to the Philippines. Sila yung walang capacity to, to return on their own. They needed assistance from, from, from the government. Uh, so anong mga binibigay naming interventions. We make a presentation with uh, employers and agencies uh, to provide uh, these uh, workers uh, with uh, a return ticket no, to, to the Philippines. Minsan, or kadalasan, we also transport these workers to airports. At any time of the day, any time of the night, no? Okay, weekend yan, okay, holiday yan. Kung kinakailang, kung may schedule na sila ng pag-uwi, Polo will, uh, will bring them to the airport. At bahagi din nung ating repatriation assistance, yung pag-coordinate uh, co ng Polo sa OWA Manila and other uh, uh, regional offices of, of OWA. This is to make sure na yung pagdating ng uh, ating nire-repatriate ay mabigyan ng uh, airport assistance uh, sa, sa Pilipinas. Uh, kadalasan, actually, yung ating uh, repatriation assistance ay halos door-to-door. -door, eh. uh, kukunin dito sa, sa tirahan sa Singapore at iatid hanggang sa sa tirahan niya sa, sa Pilipinas, sa probinsya. Of course, uh, still under uh, welfare services, we do uh, hospital visitation. Uh, minsan, kusang kami ang bibisita or uh, in, in most times, yung, yung family would request us to, to visit uh, their sick relative in Singapore. Obviously, kung Kung nasa Pilipinas nga yung, yung pamilya, 
uh, siyempre ang kanilang default ay lumapit sa gobyerno at humingi uh, uh, ng assistance at tig para tignan yung kalagayan ng kanilang kamag-anak na nakakonfine no, sa hospital. So we do hospital visitation all the time. Uh, of course, we also join our ATN uh, uh, officers as well as the other uh, officers of the embassy in uh, visiting our incarcerated, uh, imprisoned uh, kababayans, uh, mga nakulong for various uh, offenses. Uh, and most of them were uh, uh, were OFWs no? uh, before their uh, imprisonment. We also provide, uh, still under welfare services, we provide basic psychosocial counseling uh, to our problematic uh, OFWs. Ito yung mga may problema sa employment, uh, emotional problems, personal problems, meron mga uh, uh, family problems no uh, of course we, we will we will admit i must uh, i must admit na limited yung capacity namin uh, limited yung capability namin to do psychosocial counseling so when we feel that an OFW needs counseling that should be uh, clinical in approach so we, we tap, of course, the, the experts from the, from the Filipino community or from, from non-government organizations uh, here in Singapore. Okay, uh, still under welfare services, we, we conduct job visitation and, and community outreach. The, the intention, our intention here is for us no, to see for ourselves uh, the actual working condition of our OFWs. Uh, yung ibang nabisita namin, nursing homes, hospitals, uh, offices, and even yung mga uh, aircraft uh, assembly plants. We have a lot of uh, aircraft technicians here in Singapore. So we had the opportunity to see them working in, in, in their assembly, assembly plants. And during our visit, uh, we, we asked how, how are they doing and if they have issues, concerns raised during our visit, we immediately convey them to, to their employers, to their company management. Uh, we also make it a point that we touch base with, with, the, with our communities, with our Filipino communities. Uh, sa, sa hot, Sa, sa praying na magkita nyo, may, meron sa kami komunidad na pinuntahan. Uh, Nandiyan lahat kami, no? SSS, Pag-ibig, OVA, and DOLE. At uh, nakipag-usap dun sa member ng community. Yan. Uh, so, inaalam namin yung sitwasyon nila sa baba. At kung meron kami ang kakayahan na i-respond yung ganitang mga concerns din, uh, ito ay aming uh, Ginagawa. Okay. Uh, ito, no, this is one very important part of our welfare service, yung custodial pro, uh, program for our distressed uh, female workers. Uh, so for these workers, we operate and manage the migrant workers and other Filipinos resource center. Uh, as you can see, no, dun sa, sa mga pictures, sa, sa frames, sa, sa slide, our center is more than a temporary shelter. We do a lot of uh, uh, developmental activities. That is why it is called a resource center. It's, it, it's not called a, a shelter, but a center, a resource center. No? So we do a lot of uh, developmental activities like skills training, uh, health and wellness uh, seminars, physical fitness program, uh, religious activities uh, such as mass, Bible uh, sharing sessions, uh, spiritual counseling. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, we also bring our wards, we call them our wards, young residents in the shelter. 
uh, to museums, to performance shows, uh, and to other outdoor uh, outdoor sites. Uh, and the intention of the, uh, of the of the center is uh, for it to serve as a facility that that enables these workers to transform their unfortunate uh, experiences into well uh, opportunities for achieving personal uh, development, economic uh, advancement, and its spiritual enhancement through the various activities conducted uh, in the center. Uh, uh, we recently, no, uh, and because of the pandemic, we implemented as part of uh, our welfare service, the DOLACAP Financial Assistance Program, uh, which somehow has become uh, our flagship program eh, during the circuit breaker uh, period here in Singapore. Uh, and, and that kept us busy uh, for, for the last uh, few months. Ito, ito, ito yung programa na uh, nagbigay ng, uh, nagbibigay ng one-time grant uh, of $200 to each OFW na, uh, na displays or uh, nalagay sa unpaid leave status or uh, nabawasan yung kanyang uh, kinikita, yung kanyang sweldo for at least uh, 25%. At hindi siya, no? hindi siya nakatanggap ng anumang assistance from, from their employer or from the host government. Uh, uh, as of today, 1,800 OFWs yung nabigyan natin ng assistance uh, uh, under this program. Yung DOL ACAP also provides the same, uh, the same amount of cash assistance. No? to OFWs who actually caught the virus. So, uh, so today, merong 75 OFWs na lumapit at nabigyan natin ng cash uh, assistance uh, uh, under this, uh, this program. So in total, we were able to disperse 375,000 US dollars, no? approximately uh, 18.75 million pesos from Dole and Kowa fans. Uh, meron din tayong uh, relief pass, no? Uh, again, this is a COVID-related uh, welfare service. No? Uh, we, we provided 39 OFWs with relief packs, no? To economically hard up and stranded OFWs. And this is on top, no? This is on top of the over 100 OFWs na bigyan ng uh, care and relief packs ng ating uh, Philippine Embassy. Of course, uh, moving on, and under the capacity building uh, services, we do uh, a lot of uh, skills training. Hindi, hindi complete yung operation ng, uh, ng polo without uh, doing skills uh, trainings. Uh, of course, skills trainings are meant to raise you know, the, the qualifications uh, and skills of our OFWs, uh, particularly those in vulnerable uh, occupations like uh, domestic workers. So, uh, marami tayong nagawang trainings, no? basic computer lessons, massage therapy, cooking, baking, etc., which are conducted with the assistance of the Filipino overseas workers in Singapore, yung FAOs, and other volunteer groups no? from, from the Filipino community. And most of these, most of these uh, trainings are conducted uh, at the Bayanian Center. Okay. Uh, so we also do a lot of seminars you know, uh, touching on different topics. We have financial literacy, we, help, we have health literacy, we have digital literacy. We, we even have seminars on livestock uh, raising. Of, uh, of course, nandiyan yung regular seminar natin, uh, yung post-arrival orientation seminar. 
uh, for newly arrived domestic workers. We do all this no, uh, in tandem with our institutional partners and, uh, uh, and Filipino community volunteers. Okay, uh, next. Uh, again, as part of our capacity building uh, services is, uh, is the conduct no, of uh, the test the on-site skills assessment and certification. So we facilitate the, the conduct of uh, skills assessment and issuance of uh, uh, certification, skill certificate uh, by TESTA. Hindi na kailangan magpunta sa Pilipinas. No? Yung mga training graduates natin dito sa Singapore para magpa-assess at magpa-certify ng kanilang skills. So we bring TESTA to Singapore so that TESTA can do on-site skills assessment and certification. Uh, uh, kapag nakapasa no, yung ating uh, training graduates, hindi lang training graduates na PAOS, pa, pati din yung ibang uh, graduates na galing sa ibang uh, training schools here in Singapore. So when they pass the, the assessment uh, done by TESTA uh, assessors, then they are certified uh, by TESTA. No? They're given national uh, certificate or certificate of uh, competency no? uh, as, as proof of their acquired competency through the trainings uh, that they went through. So itong, uh, itong certificates na ini-issue sa kanila, I recognize uh, sa, sa atin, no? sa, sa Pilipinas. Kahit hindi accredited yung training schools uh, ng TESTA dito, basta makapasa sila sa TESTA assessment, then uh, yung kanilang certificate issued by TESTA will be recognized by, by uh, companies in, in, in the Philippines at uh, dun sa ibang bansa na kinikilala yung capability ng TESTA to assess and uh, certified skills. Uh, okay, so ito yung, yung mga pictures, no? Uh, so all the pictures, uh, yung ating uh, skills assessment and certification conducted last year and the previous year. Okay, so yung, yung social protection services natin basically uh, uh, focused dun sa OVA membership promotion, uh, sa SSS membership promotion at uh, sa pag-ibig uh, membership promotion uh, we, we we promote no uh, OFW membership in these uh, institutions to ensure their social uh, protection coverage through through the bio social security uh, benefits being uh, uh, administered being implemented by this uh, institutions, OI, SSS, and PDB. So, uh, so in, in relation to, you know, to this, uh, and during this uh, pandemic period, uh, you Polo help facilitate uh, the grant of SSS unemployment benefits to qualified uh, displace OFWs on the basis of our certification because under the regulation uh, dapat sina certify if anyone who will uh, bail of the SSS unemployment benefit uh, should uh, should be certified muna by, <coughs> by Polo na talaga siya ay, uh, na, na display so we have certified 82 uh, OFWs who are eligible uh, for, for unemployment benefit. And, and so far, based on uh, the, the information uh, coming from our SSS representative, um, 37 of them have already uh, received the, the benefit, which amounted to a total of uh, 450,000 pesos. Okay, uh, uh, moving on uh, to employment regulation services. Uh, Polo provides 
conciliation mediation service to workers and employers uh, slash agencies with labor-related disputes. Now, when a complaint is brought to our attention, uh, we immediately uh, invite the, the concerned pa parties to, to the office and try to trash out the, their issues and, and engage them to arrive at, a, at an amicable settlement uh, of their issues. Now, no, kung if, if, if our efforts fail, kung hindi kaya uh, solusyonan ng, ng polo, then we call a friend, we, we, we refer cases to the Ministry of Manpower uh, for investigation and uh, resolution of uh, the dispute or of the complaint. Uh, still under employment reg regulations uh, services, we, we also continue to process OEC and issue OEC uh, to our vacationing and retiring OFWs. OEC is very important. It serves as an exit pass for, for any OFW wanting to return to to their uh, to their place of work, to their country of work. So without the OEC, of course, uh, our immigration officer in the Philippines has the authority to stop uh, the person from leaving the country. So ganun ka importante yung OEC. So we do process and issue OEC here at uh, Polo, Singapore. And of course, um, OEC is, uh, serves as, uh, as a proof that the OFW is a documented worker. And of course, the OAC holder uh, is uh, exempted from paying uh, travel tax as well as uh, airport terminal fee uh, in, in the Philippines. Now, uh, Another major function ng, ng Polo is, of course, yung employment verification of contract and other documents. Now, without a verified contract, an OFW cannot be issued an OEC. And certainly, without an OEC, hindi ka pwede mali sa Pilipinas. Uh, we often receive feedback no, from, from our OFWs that this process adds burden to, to them. But uh, I think our Kababayan should, should understand uh, that employment verification is a necessary process uh, employed by PODO to ensure that the employment contract or job offer of the OFW contains provisions that are compliant with the minimum labor standards of uh, the POA as well as uh, of the host uh, country, the host government. Uh, in, in addition to this, no, you, yung, yung verified document, verified uh, employment contract, also serves as a proof that the company or the employer is a legitimate company or a legitimate uh, employer. Uh, and that the job, the job or the position being offered to our worker actually exists. And, and lastly, uh, this is my last frame. So we explore employment opportunities for OFWs. We meet with employers, uh, with agencies, employment agencies in need of workers and present to them uh, the available skilled labor supply from the Philippines. There are so many other, I don't know, there are also many other uh, things that we do at Polo, but I think I have already covered the major ones. So I will stop uh, at this point and I thank you for the privilege of your time and attention. Thank you, Paul. Good evening. Thank you, Paul. And that's our ever hardworking labor attache.
um, to solve the risk. But before we proceed uh, to our Q&A session, allow us to share with you some information about our labor attache. Um, sorry about that. I missed reading your bio data earlier because I was just excited, I guess. So here we go. Uh, let's talk about our labor attache. Um, he's, um, he's a truly full-blooded career civil servant. So right after he finished his Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, major in economics uh, at the Pamantasa ng Lungsod ng Maynila, he immediately went into civil service. Um, he joined, let me just, yes. So after that, he was, um, he joined, uh, if you look down below his, join our Department of Labor um, and he's gone to a number of countries with, with uh, different roles. Um, if I may just talk about him more. So right now our labor attache, he's um, with the Department of Labor and Employment. Currently uh, that's Dole and currently here in Singapore at the as uh, at the Philippine Lay Overseas Labor Office. Um, he was previously at uh, Washington DC uh, before he came to Singapore. That was during um, April, 2016 and 2018. So he's been here for more than two years. Okay, so then he also had been a director at the International Labor Affairs Bureau of Dole um, from 2014 to 2016. And prior, um, he's also been a welfare officer designate at the, while well, he was at the embassy at Washington DC. Oh, so he's been there at least twice now. Uh, and he's been also in Tokyo from 2006 and 2008. He was also the deputy center director at National Reintegration Center for OFWs and concurrently technical assistant to the Dole and the Secretary for Employment and Manpower Development. He was also a regional director for OWA NCR, and uh, that's from 20, Feb 1, 2010 to September 30, 2010. And he was uh, with OWA CAR prior to that. And he also went to Region 2 as well as Region 6. So. Um, so he's an, in a way, he's an OWA man as well. So he was also a program director, assistant desk for OFWs and families, and also national reintegration for OFWs. So um, he's really, uh, Mr. DeVries is really our labor man, and he has been working for OFWs. So um, I think if we have any question about OFWs, the future and what can be done. Um, he's the man to answer the question. So if we can start with our Q&A right now. Um, but before that, again, may I just uh, say thank you so much, Ambassador Joseph Yap, uh, for joining us again tonight. Um, we appreciate that very much. OK, first question would be um, Uh, a question from Ed, um, if an OFW requires legal advice, can they go to Polo? Uh, second question is, what's the difference between Polo and OWA? Although you sort of um, mentioned those, but if you can just explain again. Thank you. Yes, uh, well, thank you for the questions. If, if uh, the query would relate to uh, employment, uh, of course, the OFW can approach Polo uh, for, for for advice. Uh, if we can't uh, we cannot provide the uh, legal advice, then we can refer them to our uh, contacts. You uh, you Polo sa OWA. Well, uh, OWA is part of Polo. No? Uh, Yung OWA board is chaired by the Secretary of Labor. Again, this is the umbilical cord that connects uh, OWA to DOLE. And OWA is also an attached agency under the Department of Labor, like, like PUA. That is why OWA is assumed uh, under POLO. Uh, 
understand. Okay, so um, so just you cannot um, well, we don't can we, we cannot procure some legal advice from the embassy, but you the Labat may be able to give us um some guidance on whom to approach for legal advice. Yes, but kung employment related naman yan, and we know the the rules no dito sa Singapore, we'll be happy to. Okay. Given okay. 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 Thank you. Another question on difference. What's the difference between OFW and migrant worker? It's, it's basically just migrant workers. Basta temporary. Uh, ang pinag-uusapan natin sa sa migrant worker or sa OFW sila ay uh, temporary malas sa Pilipinas with with the intention of returning to to to, to the Philippines. It can be used interchangeably. Uh, OFW and migrant work. They are they're the same. Oh, okay. They're the same. No difference. Okay. <laughs> okay. Another question for um from Virgo. Uh ano, kung isang DH po dito ay uwi sa Pilipinas for home leave. Uh papayagan po ba siyang bumalik naman sa Singapore? Of course, uh, wala naman pong pumipigil. Uh, walang regulasyon na pumipigil uh, na bumalik. Siguro yung, yung, yung context niya, uh, yung context ng pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, sa ngayon, pwedeng bumalik. No? Ang, ang Singapore government ang may restriction sa pagpasok ng mga workers, ng mga foreign workers. Uh, dito sa Singapore, kailangan muna ng prior entry approval from the Ministry of Manpower. Pero kung meron silang entry approval, then uh, by all means, they can, they can return to Singapore. Ang pinagbabawalan natin umalis mm -hmm. sa Pilipinas ay yung mga healthcare workers kasi we need them there in the Philippines. So merong restriction mm -hmm. sa pagkakasabihan na to, to, ano, to, to other countries. But other than that, um, yung ating mga workers can live with it. Provided they will be accepted. So, okay, so from the Philippine side, wala naman bawal kumuwi, but of course, all the quarantine and all that. Pagbalik naman sa Singapore, depende sa requirements ng Singapore government kung anong kailangan kawin, pero wala rin, strictly walang saying, no, you cannot come back na ganun pong regulation right now. Okay, uh, thank you po. I hope that helps. And then from Cerning Po, itong question niya, uh, well, we're back to the pandemic issue. So step-by-step -step explanation daw po of the process for OFWs returning home from abroad to go back to their provinces. Kasi daw mga madami po, kasi ito naman po, nadami mga articles, iba-iba yung mga sinasabi every day. I know every day the rules change kasi iba-iba yung mga condition natin. Nag-iba araw-araw, linggo-linggo. So um, are there some like central place where advisories can be obtained and also um, any, the, any sort of a, what we call cheat sheet where immediately you can understand what to do in a list of, uh, list of things to do. So we don't, people who are going back don't get confused what they will need to do once they're back at the, in the Philippines. Pero ano na? Guide simply na kasi po yung mga galing sa mga gobyerno medyo daw may actually medyo complicated and wordy that it confuses us. No, I, I, I think I should direct them to the Philippine Embassy website kasi yung <laughs> Philippine Embassy website nandun yung advisory for our, thing, for our returning uh, OFWs. Ina-update ng Philippine Embassy advisory as, as new rules are issued uh, by the uh, by, by the Philippine government. Uh, so ab tingnan lang natin, abangan lang natin yung mga advisories. Uh, nandun pa, no? hindi naman tinatanggal yung mga advisories. Uh, kung ano yung pinaka uh, latest na advisory, and then ito yung ano, ito yung uh, masusunod. So of course, we encourage them Kasi may, meron tayong registration system eh, for returning OFWs. Meron tayong uh, online uh, registration system, yung tinatawag natin OACs. Uh, pumunta kayo sa owa.gov.ph uh, uh, website, 
at nandun yung link sa Oasis. Dito kailangan mag, mag-register yung mga OFWs na umuwi para alam ng Pilipinas, alam ng OWA, kung sino yung mga uuwi doon at ma-i-ready na yung kanilang uh, quarantine facilities. Kasi OWA will provide na free quarantine facilities for returning OFWs. Oh, okay. So, anyone who wants to go back, it's the advice to inform OWA so that all those quarantine facilities, para malaman po nila kung paano yung mga quarantine facilities, how and where they will be. Okay. From the airport to to the province? Uh, sa, 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 sa airport, no? Uh, kasi bago sila payagang pumunta sa, sa kanilang provincia, no? Kailangan uh ma- 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 quarantine muna sila at uh, ma-test no uh, for for covid-19 if they test uh, negative for covid-19 uh, then they will be released uh, and allowed to to go home to their or allowed to 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 go to their final destination can be province can be province or uh iba pang area mm, okay okay i hope that helps uh sending um Another question po, thank you po. Another question po is, pwede po bang maging OWA member ang isang permanent residence ng Singapore? Ay, technically, yes. no. Uh, kasi OFW, well, worker pa rin sila. Kasi ang OWA has this voluntary uh, membership program. no. Basta hindi pa siya nag-relinquish ng kanyang uh, Philippine citizenship at siya ay gainfully, gainfully employed. no. May kontrata siya. Uh, sa Singapore, then he can or she can apply for OWA membership. Oh, okay. Okay. So, mga uh, permanent residents, pwede po kayo maging OWA member. Basta may... Uh, basta may contract. Basta, basta employed at i-verify natin yung kontrata. They will have to, to, to subject themselves eh, dun sa verification process ng, ng po. If they want okay, to... May verification process po, but uh, you can apply. So, yes, that is good news. Uh, another question po. Um, uh, because of the pandemic, we have witnessed retrenchments, uh, which is not very good news, but and now our Kababayans are sent home. Do you still think there will be a shift in our labor policy, or do you foresee that things will go back to normal in the next two to three years? Well, that's a hard question. That's, that's a policy question. <laughs> you really cannot anticipate what's going to happen mm-hmm. in the next few years. But certainly, I would, I, I would, I would think na medyo matatagalan bago bumalik sa dating uh, dating situation. No? So I think it is necessary. Ito, na, na, nasabi din to during the lecture last, last Sunday, kailangan talagang mag, mag-retrain, no? mag-upskill o mag-reskill mm-hmm. yung mga OFWs para mag-adjust sila dun sa demands of the time. No? Mm-hmm. Kasi ngayon, technology-driven ang kailangan IT-related skills ang, ang in-demand. Uh, siguro, kailangan doon mag-pursue yung ating mga kababayan. Mahirap po uh, at this point na umasa na biglang babalik sa normal na uh, ang ating mga OMW. Pero I, I think it is also necessary no, for us to have confidence in, in ourselves na of course na uh, ma-overcome natin eh, itong, uh, itong challenging time na ito. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would encourage them, uh, kung, kung uwi naman sila, I would encourage them to go to TESDA. TESDA has a lot of uh, skills training programs now. Sila mga malasakit centers there. Tumulong din sa mga displaced OMWs kung na magkaroon ng panibagong skills that they can use, you know, Uh, for, uh, mm-hmm. for in other uh, areas of work. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay, 
so we need really to, I think the new normal is, um, we need to acquire new skills to adjust to the new normal. But talking about policy might be a bit difficult right now. Siguro po, no? <laughs> okay, um, sa pong question, a quick one down po, uh, for OFWs in Cambodia and Thailand, how can they pay or ask their relatives in the Philippines to pay their OEC certificate once it expires? Uh, Cambodia po, Thailand daw. Ang, ang OEC kasi, Ano naman yan in, in aqua online? Baka, uh, baka they, they are referring to O1. Kung, o, kung O1 yan at nag-expire yung kanilang membership, they can always ask their family uh, or relatives. Wala tayong polo sa, sa Thailand. Eh. So they can always ask the relative in the Philippines to update their membership. So they can send money uh, to the relative na uh, yun yung pambayad. So don't sa business, kahit nasa abroad sila, they will just have to, if I'm not mistaken, uh, send a copy of their passport at uh, employment contact uh, as proof na nandun pa rin sila sa, sa ibang bansa para pwede silang kailangan uh, ng pagbayad ng English Supreme Court. So, so um, kailan po yung kopya ng passport? Oh, copy ng passport kasi kailangan ma-determine ma doon na talagang wala siya sa Pilipinas uh, uh, at the time of renewal. Of, uh, mm -hmm. Kasi hindi natin inaalaw na mag-renew ang OFW sa OWA kung hindi na siya employed overseas. Kasi it, it, is, it is for overseas Filipino work. Okay. You cannot renew your, your membership kung uh, hindi ka na nagtatabaw. Oh, okay po. Okay, so okay, yun po. Uh, if you yun I ano uh, um so make sure po you've got your passport and sort of an evidence that you're still working para makadayon yun ng owa or owa ang mga rel ang mga relatives po niyo kung nasa Cambodia kayo or nasa Thailand. So um sa pabunta nong um meron bang meron po bang pangkabuhayan loans na ino-open dole sa mga OFW na gusto umuwi at magnegosyo sa Pilipinas? Yung po isang tanong. Yes, definitely. Uh, matagal, lang, matagal lang tayong merong uh, livelihood o business loan program. Pero it's not dole. No? It's OWA that's uh, implementing this program. Kasi this is part of our reintegration, comprehensive reintegration program eh, in the Philippines. Uh, Pwede mag-loan up to uh, 1 million pesos, uh, if I'm not mistaken, sa, sa OVA, sa kanilang business loan. Bago pa nga bigyan ng loan, hindi uh, ito pero muna eh, yung mag-loan. Uh, binibigyan mo ng, ng entrepreneurship development training. Uh, binibigyan pa ng ibang seminars on how to uh, establish uh, a business. Minsan nililink panga no ng ng OWA dun sa mga LGUs ano yung mga business permits uh, of, of clearances na kailangan in in putting up the business so they are even uh, provided this this seminar uh sila go tamin yes the the answer is yes there is a the program for those who want to put up a business in the Philippines okay Thank you. That is nice to know. So, meron po, meron pong loans na pwedeng may funding na pwede pong itap, but there is certain uh, training that you need to go through bago yata bibigay po sa inyo yung funding. So, just just ask. No harm in asking naman sa OWA and other agencies. Um, tanong po, um, oh, returning OFW pero hindi po the member ng OWA, meron, should, should, uh, should OWA be able to shoulder the quarantine expenses po nila? Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Hindi <laughs> pa siya member ng... Membership record, kung dati ng uh, OWA member siya, 
uh, hindi lang nakapag-renew ng kanyang uh, OWA membership. Pwede namang sagutin ng OWA yung kanyang quarantine. Hmm. Okay, so basta po may record na nakabayo siya before. So, Richie, yun, pag nakabayo ka before? Kung nandito naman siya ngayon sa Singapore, uh, siguro, mag-renew na siya ng kanyang OWA membership para hindi na siya. Oh, wait. At nandito sa sa Singapore at uwi. I I think uh, uh nililibre rin naman ng ng uwi. Na may over member. Okay, okay. Tano po, um technical question though. Uh, what is the difference between direct hired and agency hired and what are the benefits of one and the other? Okay, yung, yung direct hire, uh, wala yung involved na agency. Hindi siya naman sa, sa employment agency sa Pilipinas. Of course, obviously, yung agency hire ay hired, no, recruited through, uh, through an agency, a licensed agency in the Philippines. Ano ang benefit? Uh, uh, basically, kung 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 we, we encourage no we encourage hiring through an agency because we want to have someone in the Philippines be accountable to the employment or to 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 whatever will happen to the to, to the worker kasi pag direct hire ka uh, wala kaming mahabol eh kung sakaling uh, hindi hindi uh, sinunod yung yung provisions ng contract mo of course we can always refer them we can always refer them to yung mga employers yung airing employers to to MOA pero pagdating sa Pilipinas kasi we cannot uh, technically speaking Polo has no jurisdiction over uh, over employers here mm -hmm. Walang jurisdiction. It's not a competent authority. It's not considered as a competent authority. It has no authority to to compel employers. Kasi tanging Singapore government lamang mayroong jurisdiction over over the employers here in in Singapore. Hindi pa din Philippine government. So, sovereignty na. Uh, pero kung merong employment agency, then that employment agency can be made accountable for whatever violation committed by the employer. Because we, ha we have this, uh, under our labor laws, no? we have this uh, joint and solidary uh, liability principle. Uh, and under that principle, the fault of the employer or the principal uh, in this case, the fault of the foreign employer is considered the fault of the agency in the Philippines. And that agency in the Philippines can then be um, uh, made accountable. Pwede sila yung pagbayarin nung, uh, nung uh, breach, no? uh, yung violation ng, ng employer. So in a sense, mas protectado yung OFW na nahire through an agency kasi mayroong pwedeng habulin pag hindi naging successful ang kanilang employment abroad. Mm. Okay po. Thank you po. Kasi parang naging uh, discussion po kasi yan at one point na a, a lot of us or a lot of Filipinos would uh, go and search jobs online and they can get hired online without using a an an agency, so um so that's that's one of the reasons for the madamiring OFWs data to Singapore because I know they just get hired online. So, um, a requirement lang po uh, well in Singapore po kasi may uh, may batas that helps protect the employees. So that's slightly different. Uh, even for our domestic helpers, may insurance naman po. So, in one way, that's at least. That is helpful, um, at least na may konting compensation, whatever happens, well, if anything happens, wala naman po. So, yun, that was like a lot of discussions at one point. Person, personally, no, ako, I am for the relaxation of our 
our roles, especially mm. with respect to professional and skilled workers. Mm. Or perhaps we can retain our strict uh, uh, policies for vulnerable workers like domestic workers. But until our regulations are changed, then we're bound to implement the uh, direct hiring policy. Nothing. But of course, uh, by all means, we should we should uh, we should start modifying our our regulations, our policies. I, I remember Paul when um, I think Arroyo, uh, the ex former president Arroyo, came to Singapore and he she made a speech to the OFWs in Singapore. I think I remember one of her statement was saying, "We hope next time." Filipinos go overseas, work overseas, not because of necessity, but more of a career option. So I think we begin, we beginning to see that it's more of a career option. That's why we get to see a lot of Filipinos working, not just in Singapore, but in, in a lot of cities around the world. So the, the Filipino talent is wanted. <laughs> and I hope it will continue to be wanted despite local politics that may not be um, that may be questioning that kind of policies, but anyway, so yes, let's hope that we continue to be, um, Filipinos continue to be talented, they're, ta Filipinos are talented, so yes, uh, we have something to offer to the world. Sorry to um, may um, habol na question, um, very specific po yung, ma yung question about OWA from Cambodia and, and Thailand. Uh, may habol po siyang tanong, um, si, uh, salamat po sa reply, follow-up question lang po, saan po sa Pilipinas uh, magbabayan ng OWA? Sa OWA office po ba sa Pasay or may con um, contact details po? Mahirap po kasi miyahe. Uh, and, and you help po on the details. Kung saan po sila ng Pilipinas? Kung sa probinsya kasi OWA... Uh, mm -hmm. has regional offices, eh? 17 regional offices. Na. So from region one to, to OVA ARMM. So kung saan pinakamalapit na opisina ng OVA, doon po sila. Okay, so um, yun pong nagtanong, um, uh, madami pong regional offices ang OVA, so Punta po kayo sa pinakamalapis sa inyo. Pwede da. No need to be, no need to go to the HQ. Yun. Last question po, last question, bago tayo po magpa, ano, mag-closing. Paano po malalaman ng schedule ng test the assessment exam sa Singapore? Pwede po bang mag-exam kung hindi dumaan sa training center or nag-take ng, and nag-take at nag-complete lang ng lessons sa test the online program? From, sir, from Ed po. Yung, yung schedule po, uh, kino-coordinate namin yan sa TESTA. No? Normally, it's TESTA that uh, gives the schedule to, to us kasi hindi lang Singapore yung kalinang pinagpunta. Kaya nga, dapat meron this year na. But because mm. of uh, the pandemic, uh, hindi natuloy. Uh, yes, kahit hindi naman uh, graduate ng, uh, ng isang institution, pwede pa rin mag-process. Um, sa test. Kasi skills yung ina-assess. No? Mm -hmm. Yung yung institution na pinanggali. Mm -hmm. So if you have acquired these skills based on experience, then uh, they can be assessed by test that. At kung kapasakat sa assessment, then they can, you can already be certified. Okay? Oh, that's good. So experience counts, not just not just paper requirements, but experience counts. That's good to hear. Yes. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, a simple, quick question, Paul. Bago tayo mag-closing <laughs> from Richie. May data po ba kayo kung ilan na ang uwi due to retrenchment and ilan na lang ang mga OFWs na natitira dito sa Singapore? Or statistics po? <laughs> uh, yung uwi, I, I think mga 4,000 plus na eh. Yung... Wow. Yung mga not retrenched talaga, uh, we, we, try, we, we try to ask MOM, no? yung, yung figures, but they could not provide DAO, uh, the retrenchment numbers, uh, 
with nationality breakdown. Mm -hmm. so, pero sa, sa amin, sa data namin, uh, a little over 2,000 yung natin. Oh, okay, okay. Medyo madami-dami na rin po, no? Mm. Sana po makabalik sila ulit. Mm. Uh, any last uh, statement from you, sir? And then we, we call on uh, Christopher to close for the close remarks. Last statement po, quick one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, wala na siguro. No? Maraming pong salamat again sa pagkakataong ibinigay sa, sa Polo para may present namin mga uh, service. Uh, please uh, rest assured that we will continue to be uh, ready no? and prepared to, to serve our OFW community. Uh, whatever uh, assistance that you require from us, and if we can uh, provide that assistance, we would be uh, happy and glad to be, to be pleased to render that assistance. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. May I now call on Christy to make the closing remark? Christy, please. Thank you, Mini. Good evening, Po, and Mabuhay. Uh, thank you to our labor attache. Uh, Labat Saul. Uh, I am a witness for all the hard work and dedication of your team uh, in the service of the Filipino people or the Kababayans in Singapore. Especially during the early part of the pandemic, uh, we were together for the uh, to brave to go to the Lucky Plaza for the service of the Filipino in Singapore. Uh, while we miss the PAOS or the post-arrival orientation seminar and other face-to-face -face gatherings uh, that truly warm the heart, uh, it's really nice to see you again and uh, work with you again, albeit uh, virtually this time. So this too shall pass and we will see each other again face-to-face. -face. Maraming salamat, Labat. And join me in saying thank you also to our dear ambassador, Nanjan Pusha, Ambassador Joseph Yap, and the whole Philippine Embassy Singapore team. I saw them on Facebook. Uh, together with the Polo Singapore team, completo yung team uh, Labat. Mm -hmm. And of course, thank you to our regular friends who help us in inviting participants. We have CDE, that's a Center for Domestic uh, Employees. FAST, that's Foreign Domestic Workers Association for Social Support and Training. FAUS is also there, Filipino Overseas Workers in Singapore, the Lucky Plaza Ladies, Ateneo LSE, um, UPAS, Mapua Alumni Association, I saw them there, and United Architects, BNG, Netfield, and Rata J. And to our participants in Zoom and Facebook Live, maraming maraming salamat po. And of course, a special thank you to our sponsors, Merodang sponsors, Jollibee and Century Properties Singapore. Maraming salamat. Please like us on Facebook at Bayanihan Society SG and follow us at follow us on IG at Bayanihan Society IG and support us at www.giving.sg slash pbss. So pwede na po kayong mag-donate online. Again, maraming maraming salamat po and mabuhay. Back to you, Mini. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. And um, yes, and thank you, everyone. That's it before I say goodnight. Uh, just a reminder po, our next webinar is on September 17th. That's two weeks from now. We will have an architect who is a board member um, as a speaker. That's uh, Mr. Theodore Chan. And he will be talking about the future of the built environment. So that's another exciting topic. Uh, so please do not miss that two weeks from now, register. So um, on behalf of our board members and all the teams that are working behind the scene, thank you all so much for joining us today. And, and yes, and that's it. Take care, uh, keep safe, and good night. God bless. Thank you, Paul.